Property Investing Insights, your authority on all things property investing, finance and wealth creation with Right Property Group. G'day, how are you going? Phil Tarrant, uh, co-host of Property Investing Insights. Uh, hope you're well. Hope you're fired up, pumped, pushing ahead with property and property investing. And you know, I sort of get a bit nervous when I hear the introduction of these things and it says, the authority of uh, finance, wealth creation, and property. Well, just as a disclaimer, because it is a finance podcast, and I'm not a finfluencer, which ASIC is all against. I'm just uh, a, a journalist that talks about property. Uh, I'm not an authority on finance, wealth creation, uh, or property. My job is to have discussions with authorities of finance, wealth creation, and property. And joining me in the studio, Reshmi and Victor Kumar, the Brains Trust of... Right, Property Group, RPG. I still can't call it RPG, Victor. How are you going? Good, mate. Good. Yeah, RPG. Yeah, I thought it rolls uh, off the tongue. Yeah, it, it does roll off the tongue, but you know, um, call us by any name. Rose smells just as sweet. <laughs> <laughs> are you happy with the name? Is it still the right name for the company? It right, is Property Group. The right name. Yeah, yeah, it's the right name mm-hmm. at the right time in the right place with the right property and the right property and the right people. Importantly, mm-hmm. yeah. And a lot of people like you, you know yourself and and, and Resh be very much the face of the business, but. You have a very deep team that often you only really get to know if you're down a pathway of securing property, but um, uh, they, they're the engine. They are, they are. They, they, um, they've got the right knowledge because uh, one of the things uh, that we did uh, when we initially started the business was um, our criteria for employment was that they had to be property investors uh, yeah. before they could work, right? Yeah. Or, or if they were not, then they became investors really quickly so that they, they were actually going through the same journey that then they're helping the clients uh, undertake. Because um, it's all good to work off a textbook, but um, un- unless you've got some runs on board, that's when you really know the nuances of the different markets, the different scenarios and the what-ifs. So, Reshmi, if you and Victor, obviously, you chat a lot about property. I've known Victor for, this is going to date us, it's got to be <laughs> nearing 15 Just a year years. and a half? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, Victor always spoke glowingly about you, but he never really sort of let you out very often. So I've only really got to know you properly over the last, you come to my engagement party, but wow. I've only really got to know you properly over the last sort of year or so. Um, outside of your own portfolio and chatting about it, do, do, do you guys always talk business at home around right property group and it being the right business to be in? <laughs> uh, if we go back, yes, we do. Mm. We, we do that. Uh, we have our weekly sessions. Either we're talking about the property portfolio itself or the business. And uh, even before that, the conception of the business of Right Property Group, um, when we first, uh, you might recall, when we left working uh, as radiographers and went into business, Everything we wanted to create was about providing the education and support. So that culture has gone throughout the business, it's filtered all, all the way through into the people we employ, the, pe- the clients we have. It's all about educating and providing them the support and the network. Uh, I, I would say the right and track that you might uh, recall, um, that was initially done for giving people the support, the investors. When when we were investing in the beginning, there was no someone to, you know, get the feedback from or or feel we would feel like we're just alone doing this and we got no no one to, you know, talk to about. And mm. the whole thing was about this creating that environment. And so when you said, do we talk about business? We look at the whole business as such. Are we providing the support to our clients? Are we providing the support to our uh, staff is everyone heading in the right direction so it's a holistic approach with our business and the whole reason about doing business was what are we going to do in the world out there the the reason to become wealthy was about for us to give back to the world and at that time when we started our business it was more like we took it on ourselves as if we had to make all that money so we can support all these mm. um disadvantaged people out there in the world and obviously things have changed the way we think about things now is different because we've got more mature we know that's not exactly how things work and it's a collective that we can make uh, you know that impact or out out there in the world it's not just for us and so the opportunities are there that's the mentality and that's the 
um, that's the way of thinking about business. And so we've got a long way to go in terms of achieving that. But yes, we do talk about business and the whole lot of the why we why we're doing the business and how we can make the difference through the business. It's um <clears throat> I was organising my library on the weekend and. Uh, I found your book, Victor. <laughs> I picked it up and I went, I had so many property books. I picked it up and went, ah, that's right. That's right. Maybe that's mm-hmm. a little bit old now. And uh, I read it. It was a good book. But, you know, your your, your story is a good one and, you know, it's a great migrant tale um, uh, and, and all that is possible uh, for migrants coming to Australia, particularly leveraging uh, properties and asset class for, for growing great wealth and, you know, the business that you've, you've now created. Uh, I don't know if I've ever asked you, Victor, what was the first – property that you ever purchased in the, um, as a buyer's agent, as in a professional buyer's agent. Do you remember who, what it was and who it was for? Oh, yeah, that's wow. a good, yeah. yeah. I actually don't know who Ground Zero was you because I- initially we were helping friends and family yeah. locating yeah, yeah, the yeah. properties and then the penny actually So you're doing like, so you learned your craft by helping other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and doing it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because people were naturally gravitating towards yeah. it yeah. at that time. And, yeah, and, and the penny dropped when, when uh, one of one of my friends offered to pay me to find the property. And when I found the, the property, he insisted on paying me. So I said, hey, hang on, I've got a business on my hands. Uh, and I can actually get paid for following my passion and helping people invest in the right way, no pun intended. Yeah. Um, and and that's how the true genesis of Right Property Group was, that um, it stems way back to when you and I stopped working as a radiographer and uh, and um, started, well, we tried retirement. Yeah. <laughs> no such thing. Um, and um, we realized that, we, you know, we were helping people or, uh, anyway during our our time away from work because everyone's asking the same question mm. and uh, when you get offered to be paid for something that you're truly totally passionate about it just makes it more fun that's pretty good mm. and, and, and was, it, was there like a an aha sort of inflection moment where, where where you come home one day and went Rashmi I reckon I reckon we're on to something here like, yeah yeah do you remember, remember like, the- was, was there a a time where you went hang on let's do something about this yes that's finding that niche that people talk about yeah. when doing a business. It just came to us in that way. Like mm-hmm. I think this was in the garage in Minto. Remember yes. <laughs> one of the houses, Minto, yeah. Minto yeah. that yeah. house, which um, yeah. where we had the big um, chart and the wheel. We called it of all the wheel of fortune. Yeah. You know, all the different. Is that how you used to pick properties? Just <laughs> 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 no, in terms of we, we we were mapping out our journey and who our key players were professionally, mm. right? And we said, okay, and, you know. I reckon we could do a better job over here with the right coaching. You know, we could do a better job or help this sector do a better job. So, your conveyances, your solicitors, your mortgage brokers, your, your accountants. So we we started getting people close to us that were um, in those fields mm. to become a more like a wealth hub than anything else. Yeah. Um, and. Um, one of the initial things what we were doing when we were coaching people was that we'd, we'd coach them and then um, they'd go out into the uh, big bad world and end up buying the wrong property because yeah. we've activated sort of, you know, the system, uh, but they don't know how to follow the system. Yeah. And uh, that that's when the uh, true guidance and the actual searching for properties directly for the clients uh, eventuated. And, and creating a wealth hub, um, maybe you're ahead of your time because it's very cool very much and so. modern yeah. things to do mm-hmm. now. And uh, uh, I was tuning in to, um, and, and for those of you who, who listen to Property Investing Insights on the Property Investment Podcast Network, there is other installments to this and you can find that direct if you just search uh, mm-hmm. Property Investing Insights. Um, you had, speaking of the wealth hub, um, you had a recent guest. So every second you do it twice a yeah, month yeah, and the yeah. second time you do it with with a with a client or a guest or, yeah. or someone else where, where, you're, where you're not the co-host and, and it's a lot more media it's a lot more media <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more information a <laughs> lot more detail uh runs a lot better better production all that sort of stuff um uh with, with a, a a friend and colleague of both of ours yes. uh, ross lacane mm-hmm. who was certainly part of that wealth hub yep. uh, once upon a time and he, i think he was i was sort of tuned in a little bit in the car the other day regaling uh, the listeners on on his story is investing in property, and he's mm. formerly a, a mortgage broker with Aussie. But uh, you've done well to sort of connect with a, a group of other um, uh, professionals, professionals yeah. who who have a sort of 
um, consistent attitude and approach and philosophy mm. to property investment with you, and it's helpful. It is helpful, and and they've all gone through the same journey, and, and um, you know, um, in fact, uh, one of one of our colleagues and I were talking about. Um, you know the mistakes people make as they run into and in, as they start business, um, especially when you've got such information that's out there that everyone wants to get, jump onto the property mm-hmm. bandwagon, uh, and most people are time poor, right? So they they go to uh, people that can uh, enable them to purchase properties, particularly interstate, um, and the initial mistakes most people make is that they reset to the lowest value in terms of the purchase, right? And invariably, it leads them into, um, say, regional areas that are subpar. I'm not saying that regional areas should not be invested in. Absolutely, you you should. But you need to really make sure that you're not just focusing on the dollar value purchase and and the returns on paper. It needs to be returns in real real life. Has he changed a lot over the years, Reshmi? Does he still have the same spark and passion he used to sort of... 15, 20 years ago, does he still get excited about property? Because I, I must admit, I struggle to get excited about property these days. I find it <laughs> fatiguing. There's a lot of fuel. <laughs> There's still a lot of fuel. He's streamlined because right in the beginning is, you know, when we were starting the investing journey, mm. like as make like we were making all these mistakes. And, and over the years, I've seen like how streamlined we have become and to the point that when we Put a property to a person, like as, as to a to a client. If we say this is the property that suits you, and they go around and say, "Oh, I don't think I like that," or whatever, they are not understanding why that property was given to you, and we get really frustrated. Like, you know, come on, this is really going to do what you want to do. So, but we can't say that to, yeah. to the client. But um, he is very streamlined and very methodical and full of energy. Yes. And you're talking about property, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a moment, you got me nervous, methodical. right? Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I know he's not very handy, and he probably just sits around, walks around in his slippers all day, and uh, you know, yeah. geez, I don't know if you smoke okay. a pipe yet. No, no I don't, mate. Really I've never smoked. Um, yeah, no, but yeah, no, Reshmi is a better handy person than I am. Yeah. No, no, no secret. Nah, I've yeah. got my toolbox. I, I fix a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it, uh, seeing that you know, and sort of focus today's chat is is. It's a bit of a dichotomy sometimes, but you, you've been doing this for so long, personally and professionally. Uh, you know, we, I, I think I mentioned beforehand, and we sort of said that you you have a portfolio which is quite large. Mm-hmm. Um, you've probably seen most of it all. You've probably made all the mistakes that you probably can make, and yeah. hopefully you still don't make too many. But it must be a little bit like a, a nurturing parent working with, with property investors who may be early in their journey where... As much as you want to, you don't want them to hurt themselves and make mm-hmm. mistakes. But yeah. part of the process is they need to make those mistakes to generate their own st- scar tissue. So it's what you were saying just then, uh, Reshmi. You, you know the right thing for them, but yeah. sometimes, and you will tell them, but you have to let them yeah. go and make the wrong call sometimes. It must be very, very tough to balance that. It, it is. It's it's sad because not only they're losing on the time, they're also you know, not making the most of the money that they've got. They mm-hmm. could make they could make better decisions. They could choose the better properties because they're looking at the property on its own rather than, okay, where is this property going heading? Where 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 does it fit in the portfolio? What's the result it's going to get me? So that's where because they're looking at the particular property rather than the holistic approach yeah. of the portfolio. So that is very hard. Like we have to kind of let's say, feel like shaking someone and saying, hey, look, but this is what's going to happen if you did this, you know, <laughs> but again. But you got to go, well, yeah, yeah. make, make yeah. your mistakes. Yeah. It's, it's the horse and water scenario. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, but there's got to be, like, if I was going to say you, what, what, what are the, what are the top five mistakes that you don't have to make any more in property? There must be some, some hard and fast things that are just completely avoidable now. Mm-hmm. What would they be? Well, if there's a mistake to be made, we've already made it. Yeah, right up there. So, so uh, just setting that as a platform, and I guess the um, the biggest mistake today that people make is they focus on the debt rather than the money needed to control the debt. Right. So what I mean by that is, like, let's say that they owe a million dollars on their portfolio. They're focusing on how oh, I owe a million dollars and interest rates are at seven percent, seven and a half percent. 
Um, but they're not focusing in, okay, with that portfolio of a million dollars, debt on it, how many dollars per week am I p- uh, chipping in to control that? Because that debt then controls a growing asset. Um, and This is on the assumption, though, that the You bought the right property. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and, of course, there needs to be a dynamic approach to the property. So uh, when the rates are high, you need to find ways to balance it out or have the buffers in place to um, sustain that hard run in the portfolio. So in a journey, you'll have easy runs, hard runs, and mediocre runs where you're thinking, okay, I haven't done anything for two years, right? Mm. But it may be outside of a capability because life's thrown a a curveball at you or finance is not right. Or Or for your portfolio, it may not be the right time to jump back in and get back into the acquisition mode. So you're going through acquisition, then you're consolidating a little bit, then you're acquiring again uh, with the eventual uh, end story being that you're getting to a um, defined income at the end. Now, that end could be 10 years, 15 years, 30 years down the track, right? Each person is different. And so the biggest mistake I see people make is is uh, that and then also trying to uh, keep up with the Jonas's right so they're trying to if everyone's buying in Queensland you know they they follow there rather than looking at their own portfolio and saying is Queensland a good fit for me Mm. right not saying that we shouldn't be buying in Queensland yes there's still really good uh, green shoot properties in all states Uh, we just need to make sure that you're fitting in the right piece to unfold the full picture in the jigsaw puzzle because everyone's on their own journey and everyone's scenario is different. So what works for somebody may not necessarily work for you based on what the market is like. Lots of other variables um, that, that control that. So so you guys have made most of the mistakes uh, available the, to you. The so there's, a, there's, there's, there's probably a metaphor, <laughs> a metaphor in that um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> around, you know, I'll cry. leave it there. But um, um, but mistakes do get made. That's yes. okay, and it's, it's how you re- re- respond and react to mistakes mm-hmm. is probably the best way uh, to to grow as a property investor. Absolutely, you don't cry over spilt milk. You don't cry right? over spilt sort of cheap coffee, uh, <laughs> and it looks like the dregs of the coffee as well. Don't buy the dregs. <laughs> don't buy the dreg properties either. Um, is, is there any f- fundamental mistakes that you guys have ever made that you haven't been able to come back from? We've, we've always found a way because mm. when you're purchasing the property, you're looking at the worst case scenario first, right? So one of the things we realized very early on is very easy to get into the property, uh, into the property market, much harder to get out of it, right? Because yeah. it's got a transactional cost um, uh, on it. So um, with a lot of it, we've been able to come out fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, but there's there are a few like our Salamander Bay units that that uh, are lingering around. Did you buy a unit in Salamander Bay? That's something in Nelson Bay, is yeah, it? Yeah, service departments there. Um, How many did you buy? Two. Oh God, yeah. you still got them. So look, mistakes happen when yeah. three things happen, right? They sound like your kids' holiday homes, yeah, right? Yeah, Here you go, it's yeah, a gift. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So so there's, there's three things at play: greed, stupidity, mm. uh, or or just, you know, fudging the numbers, right? This one had all three on it, right? So <laughs> on my part, right? Because I, I, I was, uh, I got that for a song back there, back, you know, 20 years ago. What's almost? a song? Yeah. Uh, 10 years ago, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a song, uh, probably about at 70% of its value. Oh, okay. Um, and 17 years ago. Yeah, 17 years ago. There you go. Uh, it's been that long. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, the idea was that we'd take friends there and, and um, um, family there for holidays. We're doing it yeah. now, 17 years 17 later. 17 years later, we're <laughs> starting to do that now. So, so, well, Salamander Bay is pretty cool. I know that it it's on the left-hand side where you're driving up in Nelson Bay, right, mm-hmm. by memory? Yep. There's a go-kart place near that. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. It, and there's yeah. a winery just down the road, mm-hmm. um, uh, which is a nice, nice spot. So uh, you're actually getting up there now, are you? So you're yeah. enjoying it. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's cool. But, you know, it's it's... Sometimes the best mistakes you make are those that you realise the benefits on later on in mm-hmm. life, and at least you're capitalising on it right now. But but you've done nothing which was sort of impacted you significantly, or might have slowed you down. Like what what's the biggest the, the biggest impact of the mistakes that you've made? Is it is it poor allocation of capital and slowing you down and missed opportunity cost? I think it's wasn't it? Uh, uh, the mistake. Yeah. For re- I was just thinking about like uh, when um, not understanding your cash flow. 
and the mm-hmm. cash flow is hidden mm. by um, like the business would cover the cash flow, so the negative cash flow. So not having the finger on pulse at yeah. that time. And this is all, see, a lot of mistakes were being made in the beginning. And then mm. when we learned, we streamlined and we, yeah, not making mistakes now. But yeah, we're at a comfortable position where we're really not making any mistakes. Um, but uh, we've got that knowledge, I, I guess, that, that's allowing us to, to keep the mistakes away. Mm. So um, the biggest one was back in those days, the not having the finger on pulse on the cash flow, the negative yeah. cash flow. So, which, which takes time, energy and effort. And I sort of yeah. duck and dive into it every now and then. I go, the cash flow is not right in the portfolio. And you just go, oh. It's not really a lot I can do. It's not a yeah. lot you can do about it, right? That's right. You know, sometimes yeah. you just just got to weather it. Got to weather it. Mm. And I think a lot of investors are probably in that position right now. Mm-hmm. If they if they um, if if they do borrow money, yeah. um, the rates are a lot higher than what they were, you know, a couple of years ago. But they're up sort of towards their long term averages now, mm. aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and uh, in terms of uh, what I mentioned with uh, with our red cliff foray, that was. Um, um, we had several things that that uh, we are doing that was way outside of our comfort zone, and and we didn't have a system in place to actually handle that. So uh, we not understanding the process, yeah, I yeah, guess, yeah. Uh, which is the mm. which is what yeah. Yeah. So we, we we attended a seminar where they talked about this is way early in our journey, right? So we attended a seminar where they talked about subdividing and and creating the equity, creating the cash flow, and. Um, I couldn't make the numbers work in New South Wales, so of course I went further afield, mm. and uh, we ended up buying a property in Redcliffe in Queensland, where it already had a DA on it, uh, and uh, the DA um, basically allowed us to bring in another home, plonk it on the yard, shift the existing one to one side, so creating two lots out of the one. Makes one sense. Block. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so several complications. One didn't know how the finance really worked on those developments, first development ever. Mm. So I'm complicating it by doing it in another state, doing it without any mentors and not having a system in place or the buffers in place. And the um, obviously trying to shave dollars here and there. So when the um, yeah. when the builder basically said, hey, I'm, I'm here in the area and if you want... I can lift your house and slide it across and put it on st- uh, on stirrups um, uh, while we're waiting for the rest of the um, uh, pieces to fall into play, uh, and I'll charge you twelve thousand dollars less. Right? Jumped jumped at it, um, and the long and short of it was that try and get finance on a house that's sitting on drums. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that took us out of the market for about a year and a half. Yeah. Oh, because because yeah. you'd actually. We jumped, moved the house, jumped right? it. Jumped the you, you moved yeah. it before you got financed, yeah. and they went, "That's a yeah. relocatable yeah. home." That's right. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So, and and then we went and bought uh, a existing home. So, in in Queensland, as an example, when, when developers um, are, are developing a block, if there's an old Queenslander sitting there, they yeah. they sell it for next to uh, these holding yards, and they'll take it off that yard, uh, off that site, and take take it to the yard. They renovate it, and it sits there. Um, ready to be bought, right? So back then, uh, we picked up a house. So we're talking 2000 and... We didn't have any children. Four, yeah, 2004. Mm. So um, pioneers, absolute pioneers in the area in terms of interstate investors and, and uh, you know, um, latched onto an agent that was good, but then found that, uh, you know, trying to do trades from here, internet was really at its early phases yeah. at the time. So <laughs> uh, trying to find trades from here uh, was pretty pretty diabolical. Um, so we, we got this house that we paid $37,000 for sitting in a holding yard and um, uh, ready to move and, and without understanding the full DA process. Yeah. We paid the deposit and um, uh, got locked into a contract to buy that house for thirty seven k that now needs to be transported to our lot across several council areas. Mm. Uh, so that's another issue where you've got to get permission from council areas to take the house through there. You? Through the corridor because so, yeah. Yeah, we've got the trucks stop, it's loaded on traffic. the yeah, truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's um, that's then um, created its own knock-on effect. So, so uh, we we spent a year and a half trying to unravel that and and had to do the development without finance in place. So that sucked away all of the equity from the other 
properties that were not sitting on drums mm. <laughs> um, and, and uh, quite a bit of our savings as well to finalize the development, right? In the end, it worked out really well, uh, but that was a stressful 18 months uh, because I bit off more than I could chew. Yeah. And I was trying to systemize and, and create systems on the go rather than latching onto a mentor and, and paying someone to, to take me through the journey. Yeah. Um, someone that had already done subdivisions, right? So... Uh, that's the that's the biggest mistake. But we were very young. We thought, okay, we need to put a house there. We'll just bring a house and put it there. That's it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, that's right? It. Yeah. So 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 you split the block into two. Yep. So yes. so an A and a B. So mm-hmm. individual registered blocks. Yes. Uh, with their own services mm-hmm. and everything. And so the original house, did you put it towards the back of the block? No, it was side, side by side. How did you get the other house around it? Uh, no, so so we shifted. So if it's a rectangular block, if you can yeah. imagine, uh, the original house was sitting in the middle on stumps, yeah. right? So we uh, jacked it up and, and shifted other. it to one side. So yeah. it creates enough room uh, to to have the uh, new house next to it. And you're able to back it in yep. and get it up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you so there for that? We took yeah. a video yeah, of it. Video, video, yeah. oh, it's, yeah. I don't know where it is, but yeah, yeah, we took a video to show our children one day, but yeah. children have grown up. Yeah. And we Th- those even... were the days when you actually had those video cassettes. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. It's, it's somewhere oh, you actually like a handy yeah, yeah. hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got so the that truck, long ago, right? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. It's surprising how quickly technology yeah, Technology has changed quite a lot. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. These days you can FaceTime it, right? So you don't even have to be there. And the. And then we found out that the house did not have a. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Didn't have a toilet. <laughs> the one that you bought toilet. didn't have yep. a toilet. No. Didn't no. you have a look at the house beforehand and say there's no toilet? We did. You we didn't realise it. it didn't have a toilet. <laughs> it was so, 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 you know, keen to get things done that uh, we overlooked a crucial thing, right? And uh, So would you have to renovate it, put a dunny in? Yeah. We yes. Had yeah. To. With the problem solved. That's all. So that's where, you know, uh, as, as through our journey, we encountered problems and we found solutions for yeah. it, right? So on this one, we turned the linen cupboard into a toilet. Oh, right, and, and, and made it an open flow bathroom. Um, and this was not through my or Reshmi's uh, expertise. We, we leaned, leaned on the tradespeople there and, and kept asking the question, right? If you, if you ask the, uh, the <coughs> qu- keep asking the questions, uh, you will get to the answer yeah. that you need, provided the quality of your questions keep improving, mm. right? Mm. And, and, and that's what we did. And um, uh, the, I guess the biggest mistake there was... Um, being a little bit too late to solve the problem, so uh, we did a, did have a bit of a fear par- paralysis. Um, as to what what have we done? But then we picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves up, and said, "No, let's let's get on with that." Yeah. And um, it was it was a. Do you still have Do you still have the properties? Uh, no, we, we actually sold, sold that in the last um, last uh, yeah yeah. Did you s- sell them together or separately? Separately, separately, separately. Okay. Yeah. Two separate titles, and the reason for that was that it was now it had done its job in the portfolio, yeah. mm. and by selling that down, because the maintenance was now starting to pile up. Yeah. Um, to sell that, uh, that that helped free up the debt on other properties within that entity. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And 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 speaking about entities, so the way you guys are structured, you have multiple trusts for in different states for different yeah. things. We do own property in our personal names as well quite a few properties in our mm. personal names. Um, uh, and, and we have hit land tax threshold in most states, uh, yep. personally. Um, so it makes sense to flow on into into uh, structures such as trusts. Um, a lot of times people make it too sexy and say, you know, we can need to buy it in a trust. No, we need to look at all of the net flow on effect of, of buying an entity. So have a good accountant that explains all of that, not just it's good for asset protection. Yeah. What are your tax consequences? What are your pros and cons? And is it really suitable for you, right? So they, they were, one of the things we did really well uh, right from the beginning was we paid for really good advice, yeah. right? We, we, sought, uh, we, we sought out uh, referrals from our solicitors, from our- From your wealth uh, network. Yeah, well, from a wealth hub, right? So, the wealth uh, hub. Yeah, and, and, and we got the right players to uh, get the advice off because they were- <laughs> Um, they ha- already had the runs on board and they had the expertise mm. and, and they were also advising people with the same uh, level, if not higher level of achievement than us. So we're not guinea pigs for them either. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, which is you don't want to be, you don't want somebody learning on the fly with no. you and no. then they can go and sell yeah. those learnings to someone mm-hmm. else, right? You want to yeah. pay for it. And so what I sort of hear from all this, Reshmi, is um, irrespective of how thorough or planned you are, 
you're going to make mistakes, right? Absolutely. So it still always comes back to the actual, the actual investor to make the right decisions. They're in charge. They're the captain of the ship. That's right. No, um, looking at how how the market is, how how volatile, how there's so many different variables within that market, and I and I was thinking this morning, like, you know what? How well you can sail that ship and how well you can navigate through those um, waters is who is at the helm, the experience of the captain at the helm. So it's it's with our experience, I guess we've we've gained that um, experience over the years, and it's the the thing that I'd really like people to not make a mistake about this when investing is really look at the the experience of the person guiding their ship. Mm. So, yeah. so in many ways then you guys, you know, using the analogy of sailing, um, <laughs> you, you, you can't predict the weather, you can only react to the weather, you you have a destination but you don't often always get there in a straight line if you're using a sailboat, right? You've got to tact and stuff. But um, using that same idea is the, the property investor is the, is the captain of the ship but – you guys sort of rock up if it's a big tanker in a, a little pilot mm-hmm. thing and come on board and, and, and the person that knows the harbour better than anyone else sits behind your shoulder and tells you steer left, steer right to get a, a ship that you might not be in a familiar harbour with through the sandbars and through the breakers and, and into port, right? Yeah, That's, you guys are the pilot mm-hmm. yeah. in many ways. Yeah. You can put it that way. Yeah. yeah, which is not a bad way to think about it. It is, and, and I guess uh, with with the way information flows today, uh, it's very hard to judge um, who uh, who the best pilot would be, mm. un- unless you're really honed down as to what you are trying to achieve, right? So, yeah. are you trying to get out of port or in port, right? That's a big difference yeah. in terms of the course you'll take. Is the tide in or out? Uh, if I can go down that analogy, uh, and and is there a rip? Uh, that's um, or, or a stiff wind that's pushing your ship uh, off course. So how do you correct it, right? And and all of those things need to come into play. Um, and and uh, that way, you'll truly understand that investing is never a linear journey, right? And, and um, often a lot of people jump onto the bandwagon of investing after they've seen social proof in their own network, yeah. in, in in what they've read and consumed in the media. Uh, and more often than not, they're jumping in into areas that they should, shouldn't should really be because it's too late to get into those areas. So um, if I stay with the ship analogy, mm-hmm. it's after the tide's gone out. So, so you're, you, know, you, you no longer have deep enough waters to navigate and it, it, you still will be able to get out of port, but it may be more dangerous to get out of port. Um, so... That's something that people should really take away is that don't be too hasty in pulling the trigger mm. uh, when investing. But when you have pulled the trigger, don't be slow in making decisions, right? Because you need to, especially um, how fast the market moves with digital signatures and, and um, um, digital inspections of properties as well. Um, and, and a lot of people buying sight unseen, which I don't agree with. Um, you You really need to be able to get into a position where you can make your decisions quick and fast um, because making a slow decision will tend to get you out of opportunities, right? We, we've had that in the past as well. Yeah. Mm. So um, a good example of that is is um, uh, in, in my own personal portfolio, I got, I got a bit too busy and I didn't sign a contract as soon as it landed in my inbox. And uh, this is about five years ago yeah. uh, and um, I took a day to get it signed even though I had flicked through it and by that time there was another offer which was about 15k higher than mine so I had to go to 17k off above my original offer so it cost myself 17k by being slow. Do you, do you generally believe there was another offer there or was it just a crafty no, general, real estate general, agent? No, no, yeah. this, this was a real estate agent that I trust. Yeah. yeah so. Are you talking about the property where the vendor didn't want to send, sell the property when he found out who the, who the no, buyer was? No, that's a different. Oh, really? Yeah, that's oh, a different. So, so when they found out it was you, they were able to sell it to that guy. Don't, don't yeah. sell it. Because no. Yeah, because they, there must be money to be made on this property, so I've decided to change my mind, not sell. So, yeah. so <laughs> there was one. <laughs> 
I'm sure it uh, happens, right? Well, if you get a reputation for securing under market value properties <laughs> and you see your name in a contract, you got to yeah. go, you know, maybe I'm selling this under market. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. So, it was one. Yeah. It's a small industry still. It is. It, it is still yeah. very much a small industry. Yeah. Uh, and it's growing fast. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that that word under market gets bandied around a it lot, does. right? And, and the reality of it is it'll sell for what someone's willing to let the property go for. Yeah. And it may be under market for me because it's a better fit in my portfolio. So for, for me to pay under market, I may be able to pay 30K more than what you are willing to pay yeah. because it's got a better fit and a better, a better uh, I can see a better use for it in my portfolio, right? So the under market really comes into play first as to how, your, how it'll impact your portfolio. Uh, then of course, yes, you need to, need to obviously not pay overs, um, uh, but also at the same time, um, don't be so um, so caught up on the price that you lose out on the bigger opportunity by five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's why the auctioneers always say, "No, don't lose this property for thousand dollars." That's a good selling do. point. <laughs> <laughs> Did you still get the same buzz out of it as you used to, like like signing a contract, or is it just just another day in the office? No, it's just a no. process. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, we we love the hunt, though. The hunt, yeah. Yeah, the hunt is what you like. Yeah, the hunt is what you like. So when you know you've found something which mm-hmm. is good and yeah. right, mm-hmm. yeah. R-I-G-H-T. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you find that when you're um, working with new clients, they might be new to RPG and or they might be new to investing in property, either or, are they a lot more educated now? So we're talking about mistakes are good and, and there's an old adage uh, that I sometimes use um, – uh, I didn't like the lesson, but it was a good lesson, mm-hmm. right? Which means that I wish it didn't happen. However, I'm fortunate that it did happen because I'm now much better geared for the future, right? So um, are people now more accommodating for mistakes or do you think people are making less mistakes now through through education? Because with the benefit of 20 years doing mm-hmm. what you've been doing? Um, okay, so uh, there's two aspects to this, mm-hmm. right? If they come under our guidance, then obviously we've got, 20 years of different experiences, right? So it's not just 20 years of the same experience, yeah. right? So we've done many things and we've invested in many markets and many states, right? In many phases of, of the building up of our portfolio. But where where people do make their mistakes is really um, based on too much information, yeah. right? And, and they get analysis paralysis and they then try and follow the herd or the flashier, sexier advertising or um, the the areas and the types of properties that everyone else is buying and not relating it back to their own circumstances in terms of, okay, what's my financial capability, mm. right? What's my goal? Not, see, if you, do, if you do what everyone else is doing, you'll get their result, we'll get everyone else's results, right? So if, in term, if you back it back to, back it up to stats, you've got 80, 80 to... 88% of investors in Australia are owning less than one or two properties, right? And the ones that are owning multiple properties, they are either selling down within the first three to five years because it's become too hard to hold because they've just gone after the number of properties. But the ones that are really well-rounded in terms of their portfolio, they're really looking at it from a viewpoint of, okay, um, this, is a, this is a process. This is a... Um, a journey that I'm going through, it'll have its ups and downs. And believe it or not, there's only circa 35,000 that own more than six properties. It's crazy, Australia. isn't it? It's crazy. It's not a lot of people. And you think about that in the context, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a NRL football mm-hmm. ground full yeah. of people. Mm-hmm. And that's representative of all of Australia, 35,000, mm-hmm. more than six properties, mm-hmm. uh, who certain segments of the government now don't particularly like because they no. think they're, they're yeah. <laughs> responsible for housing affordability, but it's outside of that recipe. So I just wanted to add on to the understanding of, uh, you know, I've lost it. The, the <laughs> Sorry. <got bad. laughs> <Got bad. laughs> give us, give us the outtake video. Yeah. <laughs> God, the age factor. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Sorry, so your question. <clears throat> can't, can't remember what my question was. <laughs> Mistakes people make in, yeah. in terms of getting properties. So uh, the level of education, the level of information that's out there 
and not being able to decipher whether that information is the right one for them in their circumstances. So one thing people look at is where people are investing, where to get your loans from, and whether I have the affordability and all that kind of stuff. But they, the biggest other factor that they fail to see is their own life and their what at what age are they beginning to invest or where are they sitting in their life and with what everyone else is saying or doing whether that is right for me at this age and if you see that once you know at what age you should be investing and in what types of properties at what age you should be investing in and that that makes a difference whether you'll get that result or not Mm. So uh, I guess yeah. we were talking about this in the car, That's right. um, the types of properties people choose at the different ages of their lives. And that is something you only gain. You, that that comes from the experience. Even our choice of properties that what we were buying back in those days to what we don't want to buy now is very different. Yeah, I'm the same. Mm. There, there's certain properties in my portfolio where I go, I just don't want or need that yep, stuff anymore. anymore. I yeah. just go, I, 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 and, and even, and because I, I speak to a lot of property investors and professionals like yourselves in property, and you sort of sometimes get sort of lured back into it, right, where I'll mm. sit there and go, wow, people are buying good properties in Perth for three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand dollars dollars $400,000. Maybe I should get, get in the game there. Mm-hmm. And, and then I sort of check myself and I just go, you're selling stuff like that now, mate. Like, yeah, yeah you don't you don't need it or want it. Um, That's right. Yeah. yeah, and and so you know, it, it's the wrong type of property because we're incredibly advanced age mm. and and <laughs> and the portfolio uh, that you've built, right? So yeah. you know, all jokes aside, right? So um, understanding the cycle in the area and where it is at the moment, what what the normal cycles are from from bottom market to next peak, and. and um, also comprehending that those cycles are getting shorter because of shortage of supply. Right? Yeah. But understanding also that if if that's the normal cycle and if we're almost at the peak of that cycle, the type of property you'd buy there may change because of, of what you're trying to achieve. So yeah. bringing in the, the, the um, taking away the risk factor. Um, and also in terms of how many more years of gainful employment you've got left, uh, to weather those cycles if it goes against you. So if you're more advanced in age, you'd, you'd want to be getting into the shorter cycle areas yeah. as opposed to the longer cycle areas, right? Nothing wrong in investing in any of those uh, states. It's just how you invest and when you invest in which area. So I watched your market update the other day, um, which you sent through, and I don't think you've done one for a couple of, a couple of months couple or of so because yeah. stuff's been going on. And you also said, well nothing's really changed enough for me to warrant doing another market update. Mm-hmm. And I sort of take the point, right? Like a lot of people think you need to be updating everyone on the market on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. Well, property fundamentally moves pretty slow. And Very and, slow. And, and it moves at fractions of a percentage. People go, oh, mm-hmm. wow, property's up 1% this quarter. Yeah, okay. Mm. And? Like, yeah, is that exactly. really going to start changing tactical buying decisions mm. uh, at the moment? But while I've got you here, Victor, and, and I, I, I do – watch and listen to your stuff. I'm really surprised, Phil. Well, you know, it's it's, it's funny, isn't it? Most people think uh, (laughs) I wing everything, but uh, no, I do actually, um, I do actually like to keep informed, but uh, you you said, and I'll paraphrase and I might get this wrong, that, you know, maybe you've missed Perth, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's still, everyone's talking about it. It's still this property investment hotspot. Are you of the opinion of like, it's towards the back end of its growth cycle. It, it, it is an area where... Because we're talking about timing. Yes, timing, yeah. right? So, so the best time to buy in Perth was probably about two, three years ago, yeah. right? Um, and if you've missed that boat, you need to be really mindful of what you're buying there and understanding that you're buying towards the peak of the cycle. And mm. it may go sideways for a little while after after we sort the supply issue, right? Whilst there is a supply issue, there'll still be demand, and uh, knowing that we've got very recent social proof of uh, very strong growth, as soon as lending becomes easier, whether it's via assessment rate or via interest rate, people will try and emulate what they missed out on, right? Yeah. So it'll be a little bit of a self-perpetuating, but what's beyond that, right? And this is where we need to look back into the normal cycles in Perth and see what's happened in the normal cycles when this yeah, stimulus Nothing happens away. for like yeah. 10, 15 Quite years. So I reckon yeah. that's going to happen again. We're going it, to get this rate of growth it's going to go flat. Yep. So if people haven't bought well, mm-hmm. it's been hard not to buy 
well in Perth. There's still some probably should There's still yeah, large. there's still properties that I I'm still buying in Perth, but I'm no longer buying volume, right? Yeah. And I'm very selective now as to which age group and which um, uh, exposure uh, in terms of investors that I put in there. So you'd want to be younger in being able to yeah. whether well, cash flow, I guess, is one uh, contributing factor is that it's stronger out in Perth it's than much where it is there. elsewhere, yeah. which means that if you do get a period of a decade, mm-hmm. which happens in, in Perth where nothing happens, you can carry that property. But Correct. that means you've got all that money tied up. That's for right. a long period of time that's not working for you. And mm-hmm. I think that's going to be where a lot of property investors find themselves. I think you're going to have a cohort of investors who will just add to that 88% of property investors mm-hmm. already own between one or two properties. And I think yeah. a lot of them will be in Perth who have bought during this period of time. That might be topical to say because mm-hmm. you might have bought well and got some capital growth, um, but you got to extract that and that costs money. Yeah. Um, but you can hold on and leave your money there for 10 years and not deploy that Absolutely. elsewhere. Yeah. I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, it will. And, and this is, uh, you know, I uh, just want to caution the listeners that just because we said don't buy in Perth doesn't mean there aren't any bargains there. Or there aren't, aren't any good properties. There's still very good areas. We still find properties there. It's just that we need to be a whole lot more discerning in that market as yeah. opposed to other emerging markets, right? And you can't do the analysis just based on headline figures, right? Yeah. So headline figures meaning that the gross rent and the purchase price is a yield perspective because you also need to look at the running costs or so the immediate running costs of properties in, in Perth, the greater Perth area, is going to be substantially higher because we've got less tradespeople around. So yeah. your, your maintenance costs will be through the roof. Your, there's something in the water there because they uh, do charge a whole lot more for um, uh, property management. management. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you've also got uh, ultra competition in terms of all of the tradespeople are tied up in major infrastructure projects in, yeah. in Perth. So WA is doing really well with the infrastructure project. So that's creating a shortage, right? Now, flip side of the coin, uh, you've got a lot of migration, intrastate migration, interstate migration, and overseas migration coming into that area. WA as a as a uh, state did really well post COVID uh, in putting themselves on the map for, for a destination. Mm. Right? Uh, and um, every now and then we see these articles raise heads up where Perth prices are going to overtake Sydney or Melbourne and all that. And, and if you look at it purely historically. It's always been a flash in the pan. Yeah. So are there places, you say that if I was going to be buying in Perth, I would have been doing it two, three years ago, which I did, by the way, mm-hmm. just saying. Um, do those places exist today somewhere else in Australia? They do. Uh, and, are they going to tell me where they are? You no. Know, you, you, <laughs> you have to engage the services <laughs> to, to know about that, right? <laughs> I'll ask you off yeah. there. Um, the, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> promise. O- open mics. That's yeah, what they have yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, again, people get honed down into which area mm. they want to buy, right? Wrong question, right? It's what do I need to buy for my portfolio and for my goals and for my life circumstances. Yeah. The minute you start answering the question that way, you'll be buying the right type of property in your portfolio. Yeah. And this may be the main mistake most people make in property is mm-hmm. that they ask they, the wrong question. They ask the wrong questions or they identify somewhere they where they want to buy because exactly. that's what the media's told them and, yeah. and then they extrapolate those that the questions they ask themselves mm. is with a biased answer. Yep. To show was it uh, what do they call it? A decision bias or something yes. other. So mm. maybe that's the biggest mistake. Mm. You've never done that though, have you? You too. No, we uh, haven't we haven't followed the herd. We've no. always um, you know somehow we were yeah. lucky. Yeah. We were getting yeah. in at the right time. A lot of luck in the <laughs> yeah. 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 Well you guys um And then we learned as we made the mistakes. But the good thing was the the properties we bought were just, you know, the green shoots time. Mm. And so it was okay. And then Mm -hmm. the mistake was just not understanding the cash flow, having the finger on the pulse on cash flow. And I guess the answer to this is everything is relative, but it feels as though it's a lot harder today than what it was 15 years ago to buy investment property. Yeah, there's too much information. Too much information. Too much information, yeah. right? So There's too many people yeah. doing it. There's, it's harder to get debt. Mm. You know, it's, um, the numbers are smaller, but relatively they're probably similar. Mm. Um, so are we going to be thinking in 10 years' time, oh, it's pretty easy to buy property in 2024. Remember when prices were only a million dollars for yeah. a place in yeah. X. 
you know. <laughs> same, like we're going to have, yeah. we, we will be talking about that, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Just like, um, you know, the properties we bought initially, like 200,000, and now they're like 800,000. Mm. So the same. same it's crazy. Thing. And we've done nothing to, uh, apart from just held it yeah. and had, had the ability to hold it to let the market do what it always does in a, in a well-selected property in a good area. Because I often get sort of annoyed or fatigued with, with property or investing in property uh, and I need to sort of reassociate myself with it. And mm. I always just pull up a capital growth calculator and I put numbers in there and I sort of, it's amazing, you know, it? I put 5% growth over 20 years and mm-hmm. I go, uh, that's why. Yep. That's why I'm doing it. Mm. So then it comes back to the point that you made. It's mm. not how big the debt is, it's what you need to contribute in order to control the asset. Yep. And that is the secret of property investing. Mm-hmm. That aha moment that you just said, mm. like, you know, that is in my life a couple of years ago. I just, like, we, I know we were all really investing, buying all these properties and all this, like, it felt like we were not seeing any results, let's yeah. say. And a few years back, I was like, what? Is that what we've got? <laughs> like, when that... It happens, like, mm. you know, and mm. you see the results. That's the, It's the shift. Then, like you were doing it when you're putting in the hard work. Yes, you knew you had to do it, but the, there's a different level or layer of mental. The shift happens. Again, when you see the results, it's like, you know, we all talk about living in the world of abundance and all that sort of stuff. It is, yes, you, you do all that, but it's just a real true feeling that you get, which is which shows you how how much it opens up for all the different opportunities. There's so much more you can give. There's so much more you can do once you have that shift because you know what you did and what you believed in worked. It can be fatiguing when you're doing it, like yep. cash flow management, go, oh, I'm going to pay that and stuff. But um, there's a huge amount of delayed gratification when it comes to property investment. And I think one of the biggest mistakes is people try and chase the immediacy of yes. mm-hmm. wealth creation through property. Making and, and, making a thirty year decision on three minutes worth of news. Yeah, yeah, yeah and there, therein lies the challenge. Um, so people can buy your mistake experience essentially That's by a using good right way property. Of putting it. Is, is that yeah. what it is? You must be a journalist. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm a visionary, Victor. No, but I mean, I, I, you, you've known me long enough. I'm a pretty simple guy, right? So I just try and get everything down to its its most simple form. Mm-hmm. Like using a buyer's agent, you would like to think that. A big part of what you're buying is the expertise, yeah. their expertise the, the mistakes, and no yes. scar tissue. Mm. Yeah, because mm. I don't. A- want anyone to, can I, buy a property. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want to make mistakes that someone else has made and can tell me not to do that. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Mm. There you go. Buy them. Buy Victor's mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, how are you guys finding at the moment? You're sort of you're busy because I speak to a lot of buyers mm-hmm. agent. A lot of them are saying. God, you know, we, we've had to stop taking on new clients mm-hmm. because we just can't find can't find the, the right assets. Yep. Is that is that yeah. a universal thing at the moment? It, it, it is a for universal for the good buyers agents. Yeah, for I the guess. good buyers, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, we haven't changed the criteria um, to 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 cater for less properties in the market, right? So we're still very stringent in what mm. we're buying. Um, so yes, it's taking far longer to find these properties. Um, and when you do find, we need to move really fast, right? Yeah. So there's several false ready. starts here. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So and, and that that that's the mistakes that you certainly don't want to make. At least yeah. on your side, is that you don't want to be spinning your wheels for people who aren't able to make those yeah. those decisions yeah. quickly. It comes to education, mm-hmm. engagement, making their planned and uh, and and prepared. But you've the, back to the team. The team do a lot of that heavy lifting for you. So they do. when people when you're chatting with someone, you mm-hmm. know they're ready. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, so there, there is a stringent process and a, and, and a um, fact-finding conversations that, mm. that does happen before they uh, eventually end up talking to me and uh, depending on um, depending on their preference, uh, sometimes with Reshmi as well. Okay. Um, Reshmi does mentor a lot of women. I oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you don't have to speak the victor. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Did you, it's, I just, like, does it make any? I don't know if I'm allowed to ask this question. Does it make any difference if it's a male or or female? Do they do things differently? I think I'm sure so. with the women are probably I, a lot I smarter and erudite. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I even though uh, Investor Women was um, created to 
um, well, hang on. What's, what's, what's Investor Women? I don't know about this. That's oh. a coaching company that Reshmi had uh, set up uh, oh, to talk, really? talk to professionals. That was a long time ago yeah, okay. for, for professionals. And um, that, uh, that was for mentoring women uh, through finan- uh, for their finances and their investment journey. Yeah. Uh, that actually started way before. Like that was when I was... 2006. Um, yeah. 2005, let's yep. say. Because uh, when I realized that if I'll be stepping back away from the business, um, what will I do at home? So the, then this idea, like I want, always wanted to do this uh, coaching women and all that, but it was not, let's say, not the right time yeah. ever. And then, so then I went into um, creating the websites and all that kind of stuff, but not really doing much with it. And then I had the baby, that's back 17 years ago. Yeah. And then um, naturally I found that when I would take children to the play groups and all, and then all these women were like, we were chatting, chatting. And I thought, well, it seems like there's something there. And uh, I just did it uh, unofficially, let's say. Mm. And um, then it has grown from there. Yeah. I've been mentoring women for quite a few years. That's and, cool. And I find naturally the, um, <laughs> the m- men, a lot of men, come in that sense like I'm trying to mentor the women but um, I don't know it's just easier to relate with men who, like in the uh, the, the uh, demographics when I look at is like the 35 uh, under 40s they kind of it's easy to talk to them somehow they are what I'm not sure why they they tend to relate that way but mm. uh, it's it's yeah. I think it's the information uh, you know they're more better consumers of the information yeah. yeah, yeah, it's um, and and I'm I'm conscious that, um, I think in in property investment, females are really undersubscribed, mm. um, at least at a media level, right? You know, it's um, it's very sort of male dominated, yeah. despite the fact that it's normally the the, the women who are the mm. the engine room of the families, right? <laughs> who are making things happen, and 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 yeah, you know, guys often I'm going to be general here are sort of happy just to keep going as they continue to the go current, ahead, yeah. whereas normally it's the the catalyst or the, the impetus for for growth in families um, is driven by the females. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and on the Smart Property Investment Show, we're always trying to get females on because they yeah. typically decision makers. I don't want to mm. be general here, but you know, they're decision makers. So See, women live longer than men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the thing is, if the partner dies yeah. or, or how are they going to manage? It's, it's, know, a really, it's, it's really funny you say that. Like um, uh, to all the women out there, like why you've got a guy there giving you good utility, <laughs> i.e. earning income, make sure make sure he's doing it well, yeah. take control, put the money in property because if you've got another 20, 30 years when he sort of falls off the perch, you want to sort yourself out. You want to be ready. A, there's probably so, a book in that. So this is, get this, the best from is, your man. Work him hard. <laughs> work him hard so he brings the money home so you can invest in property. <laughs> this, is now, this is now midday TV. Now you've turned into Dr. Phil. Oh, I have yeah. a Dr. Phil. There you go. <laughs> Is it, there's something, something yeah. in it, yeah. something in it. But the, the, again, back to mistakes. It's it's not taking action when you can't. And I speak to a lot of investors, and and the biggest mistakes I've made in property, and you will say the same things, no doubt. Reshmi and Victor is, um, wish I started sooner, mm-hmm. and I wish I did more when I could have. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I know right now I'm not doing anything in property. I'm sitting there going, oh, mortgages and stuff. I'm, mm-hmm. I'd rather I'm sitting there thinking sell stuff, right? But I should be buying. Like I should be buying right now and I'm not yeah. um, but also also you also need to know when to stop as well yeah, yeah there's an end point to yeah you time. don't like you know, yeah. sit there and just go what's the benefit mm. you know like and you know it's, yeah. it's a, what what next so uh, hence the reason why the top properties I buy now have different purpose and utility mm-hmm. yeah you know, for me they might not be the best investment uh, financially but they're certainly the best investments personally right mm. and this is the the difference cadence of how it works um, but thanks for coming in guys All right. it's good Look at that. I'm starting to learn all the secrets, Rashmi. <laughs> <laughs> starting to get all the secrets. So, so um, if people want to have a chat with, with you, Victor, or, or Rashmi, can they actually say, oh, can I speak to Rashmi? Is yeah. That, Oops. Yeah. Is, <laughs> Sorry. I've, I've opened You're a can of flow, forms, yes, haven't I? No, yeah. here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there is a definite process, right? So yeah. uh, initially, the initial chats and making sure that they get the best of our time, they, they do need to talk to Kate and Melissa from our business. Both are very prolific investors that yeah. have invested in our guidance. Uh, so they know the systems, they know the, the pitfalls, and, and they know what not to do and what to do. So they'll they'll have a chat with them, get finance ready, and, and get get really 
full benefit of our time when we talk to them about strategy. So if I bring it back to medical analogy, which is how I, I built up this process, when you when you when you go to when you have an ailment, right, and, and not having money is an ailment, yeah. right? It can be fixed. Um, so you go to your GP first, right? And he does the baseline stuff, gets a blood test done, and then he refers you to the consultant or the specialist, mm. right? So that's where Reshmi and I come in, uh, where we're talking strategy and we're talking, okay, how are we getting to the goal uh, and which which types of properties we're buying, what rapidity are we buying it at? Is it a very slow sedate pace because of the circumstances or is it... You've got something happening in two years' time, so we need to accelerate now so that we, we, we can cater for this hiatus. So there is a definite process in place. It's not like call us up and, hey, we've got a property ready for you. The journey itself takes quite a few weeks to get to, to actually have a chat with uh, either myself or Rajmi. And, mm-hmm. and, and then finding the properties of quite a few more weeks after that as well. So it's not – if you call, call me today, uh, you're not going to, in, in most cases, not going to get a property tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the idea people have is, oh, um, I want to buy a property in Brisbane or Melbourne or can you find me a property there? And what we want to say is that's not how we operate. Yeah, We are about building your portfolio so you can achieve those goals, your lifestyle, your goals that you've planned out for. So it's more like what would work is what we would provide you with rather than what you think will work. And, and that's the council, right? And that's probably the difference between buyer's agents and property strategists. Mm-hmm. And there is certainly yeah. a delineation between the two. There's a lot of buyer's agents out there who would just go, I want go, I want to buy a property in Queensland. They go, here's 10. Yeah. 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 That's not the I don't idea. know if that's really buy- – I guess mm-hmm. it's a buyer's agent. Well, that's a service, yeah. yeah. A service. So yeah. let's say that is a service that we provide, but mm. we are providing that service with a holistic approach of our investing knowledge. So it's more like building the portfolio. And so yeah. why are we are buying – why are we are giving you that property? That's that's the difference. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Right. Propertygroup.com.au. Or Facebook. Yep. Or Facebook, yeah. Find Just uh, send us a, a message and um, we'll be in touch. Track it down, all right. Uh, Victor and Reshmi Kumar, RPG, Right Property Group. Thanks for joining us today. I always do enjoy catching up. But I'm, I'm enjoying getting to know you better, uh-huh. Reshmi. Okay. It's, um, it's <laughs> starting to see the dynamics and how it all works, um, which is good. And, and no doubt we're going to have a lot of conversation into the future. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, remember, rightpropertygroup.com.au. That's R I G H T, propertygroup.com.au. Go and check these guys out. We'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. 